Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you all uh, to the Center for Art, Science, and Technology Symposium Bean Material. Uh, we're delighted you're here on this rainy day. My name is Philip Curie. I have a responsibility for the arts as associate provost here at MIT. Um, in a moment, I'm going to say a few words about CAST and about the symposium, at least briefly, but the first thing I wish to do is introduce MIT's provost, Marty Schmidt. Um, so I want to say a few words about Marty before he comes up here. He is going to introduce this symposium for us on behalf of MIT. In 2014, Martin Schmidt was appointed provost of MIT. That may be the most difficult and taxing job at the Institute, except perhaps for the position he held before becoming provost. That was associate provost for all of MIT's space and facilities, including its renovation and renewal budgets. Marty was a master at negotiating some of the most thorny issues and resolving I cannot tell you how many space wars. You can imagine at a place like MIT, which is so laboratory driven, um, it's a really hard job. And he was so good at it that the then provost asked him to also take on responsibility for all of MIT's industrial interactions, including our technology licensing office and our uh, corporate relations office. He did both these jobs so well for six years. That same provost I mentioned, became president, and not surprisingly, Marty in time became his provost, our provost. He is MIT's chief academic officer. He's in charge of the entire academic budget of this institute. At MIT, he is the go-to person, and he's a delight to work with. I can say that. I've had a lot of experience with provosts in my own career, and I'm hardly alone in that assessment. He earned his PhD in 1988 here at the Institute. He joined the faculty right then, and he's been here ever since in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. From 99, 1999 to 2006, he served as the director of the Microsystems Technology Lab Laboratories, MTL. MTL is an interdepartment laboratory, one of MIT's larger labs, in fact. It provides shared research infrastructure for all of the campus's activities in micro and nanotechnology. And it supports a research environment, staff, students, 500 in total. That's non-trivial. His teaching and research is in the areas of micro and nanofabrication. He is the author of more than 200 journals and re peer-reviewed conference proceedings. He has received many research and teaching awards, too many to mention here. He's the inventor of more than 30 issued US patents, and he's active in the consulting industry for the commercialization of technology. His research group has transferred a number of new technologies to industry, and he's co-founded or has been the co-inventor of the core technology for six startup companies. Most important for this occasion, Marty Schmidt cares a lot about the Center for Art, Science, and Technology and for the arts, broadly speaking at MIT, and for that, I and my colleagues are deeply grateful. Marty Schmidt, I'll stand behind you. Wow, Philip, thank you. I wish I had recorded that. <laughs> that could be my daily affirmation. Um, well, welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, if, I'm, I'm sure for many of you, this is a return visit to MIT, or maybe MIT is your home. For those of you, where this is your first time here, the only thing I'll tell you is that the weather's never like this. It's more likely to snow in April uh, in Boston. But on behalf of MIT and the Center for Arts, Science, and Technology, I'm pleased to welcome you all this afternoon. CAST brings together artists, scientists, engineers, and humanists through residencies, interdisciplinary courses, ongoing projects, and symposia. I'm gonna read from my notes so I don't forget anything, so I apologize if this is a little stilted. Um, we're gratified to see individuals from such a broad range of disciplines and backgrounds gathered here today to participate in being material, which will explore the powerful new possibilities for design and fabrication created by programmable, responsive, and self-organizing materials, 
which are driving much of recent research in biology, engineering, media, and robotics labs at MIT and beyond. This materials revolution, as some have called it, offers a perfect occasion to examine some of the unexpected intersections of the digital and material worlds and revisit questions raised in Nicholas Negroponte's path-breaking 1995 book, Being Digital. And I'm looking forward to hearing Nicholas's remarks shortly. I'd like to congratulate the organizers of this event for assembling such an impressive group of contributors and tackling such an ambitious range of topics, actually, from programming languages and machine vision to clothing design and environmental politics. For attempting the seemingly impossible task of discussing all these things at once, the programmable, wearable, audible, livable, and invisible, we thank the session organizers, and I'll, I'll list them in the order in which you'll see the sessions. Skylar Tibbetts, who's an assistant professor and founder of the Self-Assembly Lab in the Department of Architecture. Uh, Leela Kinney, the Executive Director of Arts Initiatives and MIT CAST. Evan Zaporin, Keenan Sahin, Distinguished Professor, Chair, Music and Theater Arts, and Faculty Director of MIT CAST. Rebecca Uchel, who's also here, a Postdoctoral Fellow and Lecturer in the Department of Architecture. And finally, Stefan Helmerich. Uh, Stefan is a uh, Professor of Anthropology and Program Head in Anthropology. In addition, while he's not with us right now, but he will be with us this evening, I want to thank the honorary chair of today's event, Ron Kurtz. Ron is a, an alumni who has supported this symposium that brings together two of his passions, arts and material science. When Ron came to MIT in 1950s to study course three, which was his department, was a department of metallurgy, where heavy industry was the focus and labs with big machinery, forges, and welding operations were the norm. A profound shift in the field towards engineering science eventually led to the transformation of the department into material science and engineering. Ron's keen interest in ongoing changes in the field led him to support the design studio taught by Schuyler Tibbetts and related Active Material Summit organized with CAST in, in 2015. While a student at MIT, Ron developed a lifelong interest in photography, which he collects. He has given many works from his collection to the Institute and endowed a gallery dedicated to the photography, dedicated to photography at the MIT Museum. Long is, or Ron is a long-standing member of the Council for the Arts at MIT, which was founded in 1972 by then President Jerome Wiesner as an international volunteer group of alumni and friends of the arts. The Council's mission is to act as a catalyst for the development of a broadly based, highly participatory program in the arts firmly founded on teaching, practice, and research at the Institute. Ron has made a commitment to ensuring that students are highly attuned to the relationship among the arts, science, and engineering, and we're grateful for his continued support of CAST. And I certainly hope that if you have an opportunity to see Ron tonight, you can thank him for all his contributions and, and for his help with this symposium. So in closing, let me just thank you once again for coming and welcome you to MIT. I anticipate that this day and a half of intellectual exchange will produce new questions to ask, new research problems to solve, and new creative approaches to try. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marty. It's great you're here. So CAST was created in 2012 with the endorsement of Raphael Reif, who was then provost and is now the president of MIT. And it also came through a generous grant from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, a grant that has been renewed since once. So we're optimistic there's a future uh, for this center. I'd like to recognize and thank my co-founders of this center, Deborah Fitzgerald and Adele Santos. They were deans at the time of the creation of the center and stayed with it until they stepped down. Uh, Deborah, dean of the School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, and Adele, dean of the School of Architecture and Planning, and their successors, Melissa Nobles, Dean of Shas, Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, and Hashem Sarkis, whom I see over there, uh, Dean of Architecture and Planning. They have kept the ship steady for us. I'm grateful to them. We all are. Since its inception, CAST 
has awarded close to a million dollars in support for academic courses, artist residencies, workshops, lecture demonstrations, seminars, films, and concerts, 108 projects to date at the intersections of art, science, and technology. The faculty director, Marty mentioned, Evan Zaporin, Keenan Sahin, Distinguished Professor of Music, and Leela Kinney, Executive Director of Arts Initiatives, work with a selection committee to identify and curate these projects. And we're grateful for this committee's collective vision. It's a terrific committee. Now, symposia, like being material, are an important part of the center's mandate to bring together artists, engineers, scientists, humanists to address vital topics of shared concern and to disseminate emerging research and creative projects to the wider public. Being material will showcase recent developments in material systems and design, placing this work in dialogue with kindred and contrasting philosophy, art practice, and critique. The panels this afternoon will aspire, explore to new and unexpected, and they'll aspire too, to new and unexpected meetings of the digital and material worlds. In assessing these developments, it's no surprise that the co-chairs of the symposium look to MIT history, and especially to Nicholas Negroponte's prescient 1995 book, Being Digital, as a touchstone. We're really honored, really honored, that Nicholas has agreed to make opening remarks. Nicholas Negroponte hardly needs an introduction to this audience, but let me highlight just a few features of his boundary-crossing work and his vision as a public intellectual. Trained as an architect at MIT, Nicholas joined the faculty in 1966. He became interested early on in computer-aided design, and he created the Architecture Machine Group in 1967, a hybrid research lab, design studio, and think tank, which was the prototype for the MIT Media Lab, which he founded with Jerome Wiesner, our 13th president, in 1985. As early as 1980, Nicholas announced that computing is not about computers anymore, it's about living. He was one of the first people to understand that media consumption, social relations, and financial transactions would move to digital platforms from atoms to bits, as he memorably put it. Nicholas has taken special pleasure over the years in being told that an idea or a prediction of his was dead wrong and living to see it come to pass five or 10 years later. The Negroponte switch as it was nicknamed, foresaw that things that were wired, like telephones, would become wireless, and things that were wireless, like TVs, would become wired. Touchscreen interfaces, GPS, Google Street Views, electronic books and newspapers, wearable computing and sensory tracking, all were explored in early research projects in the architecture machine group that became the Media Lab. Now, after 15 years of leading the Media Lab as its founding director, Nicholas stepped down and is now chairman emeritus. I think it is fair to say that there is no better known MIT division or organization anywhere on this planet than the MIT Media Lab. Nicholas's ingenious leadership has had a lot to do with this fact. In 2005, his sights turned elsewhere. And he began working on One Laptop Per Child, a billion-dollar nonprofit enterprise dedicated to developing an inexpensive, power-efficient, network-enabled computer for children around the world, especially in under underserved locations inspired by Seymour Papert, a professor at the time here, his constructionist pedagogy. I remember Nicholas giving me one of these prototypes with an Arabic keyboard to experiment with, and it was just really interesting to look and work with. The scope and ambition of the project has inspired country, a country's social enterprises and low-cost, low-tech approaches to technological innovations for large populations who live on the other side of the digital divide. And Nicholas has been a founder, catalyst, and angel investor in more than 40 enterprises, including well-known entities in our contemporary cultural landscape, such as Wired Magazine, Tech Talks, and Zagat, to name a few. I've known Nicholas for three decades. He's a colleague and a friend, and I think our most recent collaboration was in helping to recruit the current director of the Media Lab, whom, by my lights, and I think by Nicholas's and by our provost, is just doing a splendid job in leading, uh, somewhat in Nicholas's image, that lab. 
Today, he's here to speak on the topic of BIN Digital. Please join me in welcoming Nicholas Negroponte.